All right, guys, whether you're building a house that has a slab that's getting heated, or in this video, we're about to show you a shop that has a heated slab floor. This video is really gonna give you the basics of radiant floor heat and how to do that process. We've got build show expert and master plumber, Eric Ani, based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota on this video. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you how you can see more. With that being said, let's jump right into Eric's video. Hey everybody, I've got my tubing, I've got my stapler, my uncoilers all set up. Today is the day that I'm going to be putting the tubing in for the Ani Shop build for the radiant floor heat. I can't wait because this is really honestly my most, like, it's my favorite job to do as a plumbing heating contractor. Um, today it's real simple. We've got all the foam ready, everything's prepped. I've got my uncoiler set up, I've got all the materials on site, and we're going to get it, everything hooked up and tested so I can show you kind of one step at a time on how it's done. Okay, so I've got one loop of tubing already connected to the manifold and installed on the floor, but I'm gonna keep going here. O overall, there are eight loops of tubing. Now, some people will call these zones, but that's not technically correct. So these are actually just loops. There's a supply, the red, and then return, the blue, okay? So this is one loop of tubing. We've got the supply going out into the floor and then returning back from the floor. That's one continuous loop of tubing just under 300 feet in length, okay? That 300 feet in length is, is uh, something of importance. Now 300 feet, 250 feet, those two measurements divide very nicely into the construction dimensions that we use when we build a building. So they just good fit there. Uh, over, and then also we're using half inch tubing. So if we go much over about 330 feet, uh, I know this is getting a little technical and these are in the manuals from companies like Vega, the manufacturer, but you go over that 330 foot mark and now all of a sudden the circulator or the pump that we use to push the water through the tubing in the floor needs to get significantly larger. And larger pumps uh, cost more money, they take more electricity, things like that. So we're trying to avoid that, we're trying to stay within a certain design parameter in order to do that, we want to limit the amount of footage on our tubing. And we also would like or prefer for each one of these loops of tubing to be somewhat similar in length. However, we are able to balance the flow through, the, through each individual loop based off of its length, uh, no matter how long or short each one of them is. But without getting really deep into the weeds on that, that's a discussion we can have later on uh, in another video down the road. Uh, I just want to show you how we put the, I put the tubing in. Now, I, I said uh, when we talked about the tools in the last video that I do this alone. Now, a lot of companies will send out a couple people to do this job, but I'll be honest with you, I don't think that that's necessary. This is a one-person job if you've got the right tools to make your, your job a little bit easier. And you can see just by example here, as I put the tubing in, how, how simple it is. So I like to pre... Uh, prefab as much of this in my shop as I can. Now you can see I've got these conduits here that will protect the tubing as it enters and exits the concrete. This also just keeps everything really nice and neat to be completely honest with you. Um, but it is necessary because you don't want this tubing to be entering the concrete and have a jagged edge of concrete next to it. And you also want to protect it for when they pour the concrete. They're going to be here with their trowels and stuff. We don't want them uh, damaging our tubing. So here's, I've got my coiler loaded up. Obviously here's the end of my first, my second loop here. I'm just going to shove it through here. Now this is my supply. All right. So I'm, I'm going to connect right here onto the fitting of the manifold. I've inserted that all the way. This Vega manifold actually has these nice little inspection, uh, holes drilled into the side of these stainless steel fittings to show you that your tubing is all the way inserted in there. That's important uh, to know you don't, you got to make sure you're inserted all the way. But I just use the manual tool like we talked about in the last video to press that. It fits in there like so. Very simple, just squeeze it by hand. Spring loaded, good to go. Set that aside. Now I'm ready to go. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. 
pretty particular in how this all looks. <laughs> but there we go. We're ready to start stapling the tubing down. So my design on this radiant system is to have this tubing spaced out at nine inches. Now along the perimeter here, we need it to be a little bit closer because that's where the highest concentration of our heat loss is. So I just use my foot to space it out and I try to keep my staples evenly spaced throughout the floor. And you want to go every two to four feet with the staples. And as you can see, it's just a quick, easy process. I've slowed it down a little bit here just for the video. But generally speaking, I'll move kind of as fast as I can because it's not that complicated. And so as I'm going along, these staples have these giant barbs in them and they're just holding on to that foam. It's holding that half inch tubing down in place. They're quite strong, believe it or not. I'm just using the, the sole of my boot to kind of hold and guide the tubing. And I'm pulling it off the uncoiler as I go. In the high traffic areas, like in front of these overhead doors, I'll likely put a few more staples in when I'm all done with the entire floor because the concrete crew is gonna come in and I don't want them tripping over the tubing and pulling it up off the grid uh, as it's stapled down. But it's pretty simple. Just keep going here. And eventually, I'll run out of tubing on this roll. I'll have to reload it. Okay, so now as you see, I just came down and did this loop right here. We're doing a, a serpentine pattern on this floor, just going back and forth uh, until we've hit our footage mark right around that 300 feet. And we wanna make sure we're back at the manifold before we run out of tubing. Now we're doing that evenly across the entire floor. I've divided this floor up into eight different sections because I've got an eight outlet manifold. Um, so it's very common to install the tubing this way. It's very economical and it's a perfect fit for this type of building. So in a living space, we might be doing a different type of pattern with the tubing, but in a garage space like this, we just need even coverage of the floor and we want to do that with our proper spacing and that's all part of the design phase that we can get into in another video down the road. Okay, finally. Now that is the finale of the install. So we've got all eight loops connected to the manifold. And now what you saw me do is just put an air pressure test on it. So in our area here, our inspectors require us to put 60 PSI uh, on the whole entire floor, all the tubing and manifold. And then we'll leave that air pressure test on while they pour the concrete. Uh, some people will say that the air is left on during the pour, so if something were to damage the tubing, it would you know, push the concrete away or whatever. I'm not sure. I've never actually seen that happen, to be completely honest with you. Uh, after 20 plus years of putting radiant floor uh, tubing in, I've never seen the tubing actually damaged on the pour. Now, I'm going to knock on wood after saying that, uh, but I will say this. The tubing is extremely extremely tough and when they pour the concrete they're going to take care so they don't make it you know damage the tubing uh, a lot of times you'll see the concrete put in with a conveyor a uh, few times you'll see them pumping it in uh, and, and occasionally you'll see them rolling over it with buggies but that's not typical now if you just take a look at the manifold one more time here let me move my compressor out of the way you can just see that 
having it prefabbed with the, the conduit 90s at the bottom, the bend supports, uh, put on the strut like this. It just kept everything nice and clean. It's not necessary, but for me it is. This, if, you know, for my satisfaction, I like this manifold system. I like it to look like this. I think it's just easier to work with overall when it's all organized. Now we take a look at the rest of the system here. The whole floor is covered evenly and you know, just in the, in the even pattern, even spacing on the tubing, every square foot of the, tu of the floor here is covered uh, and it's all one single zone. You know, it's just a satisfying process for me. I hope you enjoy seeing how it's all put together like this. The next steps would be the pouring of the concrete. And what they'll do in preparation for that is they'll lay down a uh, three by three or two by two, I'm not sure, grid of rebar. They'll use three eighths rebar. It'll go over the top of the tubing, but be pulled up into the, the slab. So it won't damage the tubing, of course, because they'll keep it off of there. Uh, they will be using a conveyor for this. They'll be doing it in two pours. They'll do a L shape around the perimeter. That'll all be flat floor. And then they'll have two dishes where the, the um, trench drains are in front of the garage doors. So that's it for me. We've got the air test on. I've got to call my inspector to have it him come out and take a look at it, check it off on the permit. And otherwise, that's, uh, this, that's a wrap. Guys, this has been a best of the Build Show episode. On Tuesdays right now, we're featuring all of our Build Show Network contributors, including Eric Ani a master plumber who's shooting videos every single week on Build Show Network. And he's also shooting a ton of content on his Instagram feed at Mechanical Hub. Eric is super engaging and fun to watch. And trust me, you want to follow him on social. But if you want to go see all of his previous videos on all kinds of topics, go over to thebuildshow.com, hit that hamburger menu. That's the three lines at the top. Go to Build Experts, and then you'll see Eric Ani's name right there at the top. It's all alphabetical, and you can see all the amazing content. He's in the Build Show for several years now. He has a ton of great content. And if you want to know what's new from Eric on a weekly basis, sign up for our newsletter. There'll be a link in the description that if you sign up for that newsletter, we're going to send you a link, or I should say a quick email, on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays that shows you everything that's new on our site. We had to go to three days a week because we're publishing like 15 new videos a week now over on the site. Everything's free, everything's manufacturer supported, and there's some fabulous content to really educate you, whether you're a tradesman like Eric, whether you're a builder like me, maybe you're even a homeowner who's really understanding how am I gonna build this fantastic house in the future. We appreciate all your support and I'm so thankful to have Eric on the network. With that being said, guys, hit that subscribe button below. New content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.